Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tarsia Hubert and I am a math professor at a community college in Houston, Texas. And I love, love, love math. I'm very passionate about math. So if this is your first video that you're viewing on my channel, please take a second and just hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification as well. So you'll get a notification every time I release a new video. So in this particular video, we're gonna talk about equations versus expressions. So this is an algebra class. Most likely you're taking an algebra class and that's why you're viewing this video. And so what we wanna do is we wanna talk about what is an equation? Cause algebra is all about solving equations and there are different types of equations, but we just wanna to, want to know basically what's an equation and what's an expression, okay? So here's the key. What makes something an equation is an equal sign. If it has an equal sign in it, it is an equation. And a variable, it has to have a variable too, okay? So for example, if I had 3x plus 4x equal five, because there's a variable and there's an equal sign, this would be an equation, right? What if I had 3x squared minus six? What do you think, is that an equation? If you say no, you are correct. This is not an equation because it has no equal sign. If it has no equal sign, then this is just an algebraic expression, okay? What about 2x squared plus 3x equals seven? Is this an equation? If you say yes, you are correct because it has an equal sign, it's an equation. Uh, 3x plus 4y equal 10, is that an equation? Yes, it is an equation because it has an equal sign. Even though it has more than one variable, it's still an equation, okay? And so in this class in algebra, what you're gonna be learning is how to solve equations. So what do I do with expressions? Expressions, you just simplify them. You combine any terms that are alike and you simplify it as simple as it can get. But with equations, like the first, third, and the fourth one, you can actually solve for the variables, okay? Now, if there's one variable and one equation, you can solve it. But if there's more than one variable, you would need more than one equation to solve it. So you'll learn all about that later. But right now, all you need to be able to do is identify what is an equation and what is an expression. An equation has an equal sign. An expression does not have an equal sign. They both have variables involved in them, and that is the basis of algebra. You have variables, and you're studying how to manipulate variables, how to solve for variables, and so forth. So hopefully you now can identify what's an equation and what's an expression. Now what we're gonna go on to learn is how do we solve equations? And so what are the different types of equations? And then how do you solve each of those types of equations? So there are various types of equations that we're gonna talk about um, in algebra. However, the very first type of equation we're gonna talk about are linear equations in one variable. So a linear equation, so first of all, it has an equal sign. Um, it's linear when the highest exponent on your variable is one. So in this particular problem, A, B, and C just represent some numbers but the variable here is x. And there is no exponent on x. Or there is, but it's not written there. There's an understood exponent of one. So when there is no exponent written, it has an understood exponent of one. Um, whenever the highest exponent on x is one, or the highest exponent of your variable is one, and there's only one variable, then you have what's called a linear equation and one variable. Now. In order to solve linear equations in one variable, you have to know about two principles. The first principle we're gonna talk about in this video is the addition principle. The very first property is called the addition property of equality. And what it says is that if you have two things that are equal to each other, so say A equal B, then what the addition property of equality says is I can come and I can add something, any number to A, and this would still be equivalent as long as I add it to B as well. Meaning this statement is still equivalent. So as long as I'm adding the same number to both sides, then I still end up with an equivalent statement, okay? So this is the concept that you've probably heard before. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. Well, this particularly, this concept pertains particularly to addition right now. So. Whatever I add to one side, as long as I do it to the other side, that is a legal thing, right? It's not illegal. Um, and because subtraction is adding a negative, so if I was to say, um, let's add a negative number to both sides, then this will also 
still be equivalent because plus a minus, whenever you multiply a positive and a negative number, that is a negative number. So plus or minus turns into a minus, plus or minus turns into a minus. So what this is saying is even if I decided to add a negative number to both sides, this would still be equivalent. So this lets me know, this property lets me know that as long as the number is the same, I can add that number to both sides and still have an equivalent expression. And the same goes with subtraction. I can subtract the same number from both sides and still have an equivalent expression. So what does that say? In summary, as long as you add the same number to both sides or subtract the same number to both sides, you're not changing your equation. Okay, so let's see how that works. In this first example, we want to solve for x in the equation x minus 16 equals 7. So it is an equation because there is an equal sign. When there is an equal sign, you want to solve for the variable. The variable is x. The highest exponent on x is 1. So that makes it a linear equation. So I can solve this by using the addition property. Okay, so one of the things is whenever you're solving an equation, you want to think of both sides of the equation. So this is just a little analogy I like to use. You want to think of both sides of the equation as a house. And you want to think of yourself as the variable. And the goal is to be home alone. And if I'm the variable and I want to be home alone, I mean, I got to get rid of everybody else that's in the house with me. And so right now, minus 16 is in the house with me. So I want to get rid of minus 16. And the way I do that is I have to do the opposite of minus 16, which is, okay, so we didn't talk about this, but there are four operations in um, math, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. I like to call them married couples. Addition is married to subtraction and multiplication is married to division. Essentially, addition and subtraction are the same thing. They're one. So that's why I like to call them married couples because when you think of a union between two people, you think of two people becoming one. So addition and subtraction are essentially the same and multiplication and division are essentially the same. So they're married or you could say they're opposites of each other, meaning they undo each other. Um, so if I want to get rid of minus 16, that is a subtraction, I would need to call his spouse. And I say that's... Um, the masculine one, but it doesn't matter. Um, I would call his or her spouse, which is addition, to come get them. And so minus 16, the opposite of minus is plus. So I would need to add 16 to get rid of the minus 16. I need to make that 16 cancel out. And I do that by adding 16. Now, here's where the property comes into play. Whatever I do to one side, I also have to do to the other side. So minus 16 ain't got to go home, but he got to get out of my house, right? So he has to go somewhere. So I'm just going to move him to this house next door. And so whatever I do to one side, I have to do it to the other side as well. So minus 16 and plus 16, those cancel. That becomes zero. That leaves me with X on this side. Bring down my equal sign. And 7 plus 16 is 23. And so I've solved for X. I've gotten home alone, which is the goal to be home by myself. And X is equal to 23. I can go back and I can check to see if that works out. So remember my equation was X minus 16 equals seven. If I was to plug in 23 for X, 23 minus 16 is seven. Seven does equal seven. So yes, that checks out. That lets me know that my solution of X equal to 23 is correct. So that's how you would solve this equation using the addition principle. Let's look at another example. In this second example, I want to solve 6x minus 8 equals 7x. I want to solve this for x. This is an equation because there is an equal sign. Um, it's a linear equation because the highest, the highest exponent on x is 1. And so this makes it a linear equation and I can use the addition property possibly to solve it. So remember, I want to think of each side as a house. I want to think of myself as X and I want to be home alone. Well, in this particular example, I'm even, I'm not even all together. Some of me is on one side in another house and some of me is on the other side in another house. So the first thing I got to do is get myself together. That means I need to get all of my X's on one side. And so I can either move this six X over here or this seven X over here. And so what I want to do is I'm going to move this six X over here. Um, to gather myself all together in this house. Now, th since this is a positive 6x, I would call the spouse of addition, which is subtraction, to get rid of that positive 6x. 
So to get rid of that positive six X, I would need to subtract six X. And so according to our property, our property tells us that whatever we do to one side, we also have to do it to the other side of the equal sign. So whatever I'm doing on one side, I gotta make sure I'm doing that same thing on the other side of the equal sign. So since I'm subtracting six X here, I need to subtract six X here. These six X's will cancel, a positive six X minus six X will cancel. I will drop down this minus eight. And this 7x minus 6x becomes a 1x. And I don't have to write the 1 in front of the x. So I would get that x is equal to negative 8. I'm all alone by myself now. That's the goal, to be all alone if I think of myself as the variable. x is by itself, so that means my solution is negative 8. And again, you could check it. Plug in negative 8 and see if that checks out. So this is the question. Six times negative eight is negative 48. Seven times negative eight is negative 56. Negative 48 minus eight is negative 56. Negative 56 equals negative 56. So that checks out. So this is just checking to make sure your answer is right. You don't have to do that, but it's good to do it so that you know that you got the correct answer. So that's how you will work this example. Let's look at another one. For example, three is we want to solve three fifths x plus 15 equal eight fifths x. And so we have fractions in here, but don't let the fra fractions scare you. Um, you will work it the same way you work the other one. So the goal is to get x on the side by itself. Think of yourself as x. Think of each side as a house. You want to be home alone. You want some peace and you want some quiet. Um, so I have some x over here and some x over here. So I need to gather myself together by getting all of my x's on the same side. So I'm going to move this, since there's only x over here, I'm going to move this 3 fifths x over here with that. This is a positive 3 fifths x. So to get rid of addition, you call the spouse of addition, which is subtraction, to come get rid of 3 fifths x. So 3 fifths x minus 3 fifths x, those go away, leave me with 15. And I'm left with, now I'm just going to write this out, 8 fifths x minus 3 fifths x. Because I have to subtract fractions. And one of the things when you subtract and add fractions, you have to have the same denominator. Now, if you don't know how to find the same denominator, then there's another video. I'm putting in the link in the, I'm including the link in the description about how to add and subtract fractions. That means how do you make the denominators the same? So watch that video if you struggle with that. Um, but we got, we got lucky in this example. The denominators are already the same. Once the denominators are the same, then you can combine those by adding or subtracting the numerators, and then the denominator will stay the same. So I would do eight minus three, which is five, and the denominator will stay the same. Well, five divided by five, anytime your numerator and denominator is the same, that equals to one. So this is just one X. So 15 is equal to one X, which we don't have to write the one, we just write X. So our answer to this particular problem will be 15. Again, if you need help with adding and subtracting fractions, make sure you click on the link and watch that video about how to add and subtract fractions. Okay, now look at this example. It looks complicated, but it's not, right? Okay, you just gotta take it and break it down piece by piece. So this says, let's solve three times two plus five X minus one, one plus 14 X equal to six. We wanna solve this equation. And what looks different about this equation is that it includes parentheses. So whatever you have an equation that includes parentheses, you want to get rid of those parentheses first, and then you want to um, go through the process we went through earlier of getting X on the side by itself. So how do you get rid of parentheses? You have to do what's called distribute. You have to use the distributive property. The distributive property just means you take whatever's on the outside of that parentheses and you multiply by everything inside that parentheses. So for example, for this first set of parentheses, I have three on the outside, I have two plus five X on the inside. So I wanna take this three and I wanna multiply it by everything inside the parentheses. So I'm gonna do three times two, which is six, and then I'm gonna do three times five, which is 15. And that's a positive three times a positive five, so that is a positive 15 X. Once I multiply everything in the parentheses by three, my parentheses goes away, okay? I wanna do the same thing here. Now there is no number in front. When there is no number in front, there's an understood one right there. So what I'm distributing here is a minus one, a negative one. So I'm gonna multiply everything in the parentheses by negative one, which essentially all it's gonna do is change the sign of everything. So negative one times a positive one is a negative one, 
And negative one times a positive 14 X is a negative 14 X. And so once I distribute that negative one, those parentheses are gone as well. And now we end up with um, a linear equation. It was a linear equation before, but now you can really see there's an equal sign. You have variable X and their highest exponent on X is one. Now in order to um, solve for X, you gotta gather yourself together. That means you need to combine all your like terms together. So I have more than one X. In the last example, the X's were on the opposite sides of the equal sign. This time they're on the same side of the equal sign. So that just means combine them together. So right here I have a 15X minus a 14X. So 15 minus 14. So if you wanna rewrite that, you can rewrite it together. That's 15X minus 14X. And then I have two numbers that are the same and they're on the same side of the equal sign. Whenever they're on the same side of the equal sign, you just combine them. It's when they're on the opposite side of the equal sign that you have to apply the addition property, which means you do the opposite of addition or the opposite of subtraction. So I'm gonna write the six and the minus one together so you can see what two things I'm combining. I'm combining these two things and I'm combining these two things. So 15X minus 14X is just one X. And I don't have to write the one in front. And six minus one is five. So that leaves me with X plus five equals six. So look how simple that gets. Now we just need to get rid of the five because we want to be on the side by itself. We want to be at home in peace and quiet. So we get rid of the five. That's a plus five by calling the spouse of addition, which is subtraction. So you get X is equal to one. The plus five and the minus five goes away and it leaves you with X on the left side of the equal sign and six minus five is equal to one. So you end up with one as your answer. You can go back and check it, um, but it works out. But this is how you will work the problem if there were parentheses involved. So this is how you use the addition property of equality. There's another property called the multiplication property of equality. So that will be the next video that you check out. So make sure you check out the multiplication property of equality next and then you'll know how to solve linear equations. Thanks for tuning in. If this video helped you, make sure you hit the like button and I will see you in the next video.